In 1956, a French professor was brought thousands of meters underground by a team of miners to take samples for his measurements. When a landslide occurred, they were unable to go back up and looked around for an exit. That is when they discover a crypt and accidentally awaken a legendary, ferocious monster. The movie begins in 1856 when an incident befalls a mining operation in the north of France. The miners were tasked with extinguishing the flammable gases to prevent them from exploding, and they dispatched someone through the broken wall to finish the task. But the miner realized that they weren't the only ones in there when he saw a large hand with long, sharp claws on a stone pillar. The creature's hand disappeared into the darkness, and the miner dropped the candle he was holding, screaming, and running back to where the others were. The dropped candle caused a huge explosion that trapped the miners underground, and they were never found again. Fast forward to 100 years later in Morocco and a man named Demir was roughly woken up by a nightmare. He heard someone calling him from outside and peeked out of the window to see his friend waving at him. His friend told him about a mining job in France that apparently pays really well and Amir seems to be interested. Since Amir was born, poverty has always been something he struggled with. So no matter how hard a job is, he'd willingly take it to alleviate his financial problems. They arrived at a place where they were going to be checked to see if they were fit enough for the mining job and lined up along with the other applicants. A man gave a short explanation of the job and checked the applicants one by one, marking those who are fit with green and those who are not with red. The man liked the build of Amir's friend's body, but due to the latter's coughing, he was marked red. The same thing happened to Amir, who was marked red due to his being too smart, but Amir grabbed the green mark from the man's assistant and repeatedly marked his chest with it. Making fun of his desperation, the man put a green mark right on Amir's forehead. But due to his action, the man was annoyed and decided to send him to the hardest mining operation, which is in Mine 5, known as Devil's Island. Professor Berthier arrived at the mining site and met up with Foissier, the man running the site. He requested to go down the mines with the miners with the excuse of collecting samples for his measurements, but Foissier didn't like the idea of a completely inexperienced person going down the mines, which could be dangerous for the professor. But Professor Berthier had bribed the foreman, and even though he wasn't happy with his own decision, Foissier had agreed to let the professor into the mines. An accident happened in Mine 5, and all the workers on the site watched in shock and repugnance as they watched a miner scream in pain, his leg cut off while being carried to the on-site medical clinic. Foissier and Professor Berthier learned that the miner who helped his injured fellow was Roland, the best miner on site who regularly works at Mine 5. Foissier called Roland to his office and told him about taking Professor Berthier with him to the mines. Roland disagreed at first, but eventually gave in. A team of miners going to Mine 5 gathered together, with Amir joining the team as well. He met his team, comprised of Santini, an Italian guy, Miguel, a Spanish guy who is an expert in explosives, Polo, a miner who brings his horse along to help him with the heavy stuff, and Louis. They took the elevator leading down to the underground and checked the part of the mines that they were supposed to break through. The team found it odd that it was on the floor but still continued on their next task, which is to dig. They went back after a while to get some rest and do some planning with Professor Berthier before going back down the mines with the professor. They planted explosives on the part they were going to break through and detonated the charges. They huddled around the hole in the ground and found a hidden cave underneath. The miners were surprised to see a cave underneath the mines, but it seems like Professor Berthier already knew. His excuse for collecting samples had been a hoax and he was actually expecting there to be a cave underneath Mine 5. They rappelled down the dark cave and looked around, studying the unknown area they were in when Berthier walked ahead of them. The miners tried to follow but eventually lost the professor. They searched around, calling for the professor, but their calls abruptly stopped when they discovered something. On the ground lie the remains of a person who had previously gone inside the cave. Based on the bones, it had been a long time ago. Looking around, they discovered writings on the wall that seemed to be written in blood. Reading the bloody writings on the wall, the duo crept out and was startled when Santini suddenly appeared behind them, screaming at them while holding a skeleton. They regrouped and talked about the cave when they noticed light flickering. They approached Roland, who was staring at the professor taking pictures of the cave. They approached the professor and chastised him for running off without them. Professor Berthier apologized for running off without their permission and tried to explain himself when Amir asked him about the carvings on the wall. Professor Berthier explained that he believed there was a secret crypt on Devil's Island in the cave they were in, and that secret crypt might be behind that wall with carvings on it. Roland decided to break through the wall so they could see it for themselves. An explosive was planted and the team stayed away from the explosion that broke the carved walls. They entered through the broken walls and were astonished upon discovering that behind this hidden cave is a hidden crypt. 
Professor Berthier collected samples from the walls inside the crypt with more carvings on them, chuckling in delight at the successful discovery of the crypt. Louis looked around the crypt by himself, despite the complaints from the others who didn't want to go alone. Seeing that Louis didn't listen to them, the rest of the team followed, and that's when they discovered all the remains of the previous miners who had never been found in 1856, leaving the team unsettled. They also found a sarcophagus, and the team gathered around it with Professor Berthier studying the sarcophagus. He explained that a sarcophagus is typically associated with the ancient Greek, Roman, and Egyptian civilizations. An argument broke out among the professor and the miners as they decided what to do with their discoveries before they walked out of the crypt. Professor Berthier took a picture of the sarcophagus before following the others who approached Polo's horse. But then the horse's behavior started showing agitation and Polo struggled to calm it until it eventually ran off. Before the miners could follow the horse, there was a tremor and cracks started appearing on the walls. There was a landslide that made the cave collapse, trapping Professor Berthier and the miners in the cave and injuring Santini, who was trapped under a pile of rocks. Santini screamed as he was pulled out from under the rocks, and he was immediately tended to. Roland looked at the now-blocked entrance and then around the cave. Roland was angry at Professor Berthier for leading them into the cave and the crypt, and he had to be pulled away from the professor for him to calm down. Roland then wrapped a cloth around Santini's leg and Santini took a deep breath before screaming in pain as Roland attempted to fix his injury. Meanwhile, Amir had strayed from the team after the collapse and he frantically ran around trying to look for them. He stopped when he saw the entrance to the crypt and cautiously entered, yelping in surprise when he was suddenly grabbed. He breathed out in relief when he realized it was just Louis and they went back to where the others were, seeing Santini now resting. Roland and Miguel were talking when Professor Berthier approached them, unaware of what the others were doing. Amir was just watching them fail to open the sarcophagus, and when Polo and Louis rested for a while, he approached the sarcophagus and noticed what seemed to be a keyhole on top of it. Amir rummaged through his bag and grabbed the craft he had found earlier. He stuck it inside the keyhole, and they were all surprised when they heard a sound coming from the sarcophagus. Louis and Polo cheered as they opened the sarcophagus and were excited to see treasures inside the stone coffin. The duo greedily took everything their hands laid on while Amir watched on with uneasiness. He tried to go back to Roland and tell the others what Luos and Polo were doing, but Louis grabbed him and slammed him on the wall. Louis berated Louis and repeatedly slapped him. Polo screamed at him to stop, and Amir ran away from the duo who continued their greed. Polo and Louis only stopped when they heard an inhumane growl coming from behind them and they slowly turned to look. Amir heard their screams and was confused when Louis and Polo ran past him as if something was chasing them. They ran back to where the others were and told them about what they saw. Santini then started gasping as he pointed behind Polo. They all turned to look at Polo and watched as a mysterious creature grabbed him. They tried to chase after the monster to save Polo but they were too slow compared to the monster. When they found him, he was already dead. Roland covered Polo's body and talked to Amir and Professor Berthier about the cave, trying to figure out a way to leave. Due to the recent events, the team had completely forgotten that they left an injured Santini behind and was only reminded by Louis, who urged them to return to Santini. Santini, on the other hand, could sense that there was something there with him. He used the flash of Professor Berthier's camera to see and was stricken with fear when he found the monster slowly approaching him. The rest of their team returned only to find the creature holding Santini by the neck. They watched in both fear and anger as the creature ripped through Santini's stomach, his organs spilling out. The remaining team members searched around the crypt and Professor Berthier was reading the ancient phrases on the wall. They continued exploring until they discovered another chamber with inscriptions on the wall. In the middle of the room is Polo's dead horse. They found a carving on the wall of a legendary creature that Professor Berthier seemed to know about. Professor Berthier read an inscription and explained that the monster might have been an ancient god of sorts and a cult might have been worshipping, performing rituals, and sacrificing lives. Turning to leave, Amir noticed something weird happening to the horse's body and they watched as the monster came out of the horse's organs. Professor Berthier watched in admiration as he tried to communicate with a legendary creature. The creature approached Professor Berthier and entrapped him with his bony body and hands. Amir escaped the room and pulled a lever that closed the chamber. An argument broke out between Amir and Louis. Amir was furious as he blamed Louis for waking the creature up. He told Roland and Miguel about Louis and Polo stealing from the creature's stone coffin and Roland grabbed the bag, confirming what Amir said. They were all angry at Louis for being the reason for the creature waking up but decided to drop it and figure out a way out with the help of the professor's book. When they heard the growls of the creature, they decided to turn off their flashlights, thinking that it would help prevent the creature from seeing them. 
but they realized that it was useless as they turned the flashlights back on and found the creature right beside them. Both Lewis and Miguel were killed, leaving only Roland and Amir. The remaining duo continued exploring, but as Amir stood on his spot, the creature wrapped his hand around his leg and dragged him somewhere. Roland screamed in despair as he realized his whole team was gone and he was now all alone. Determined to survive, Roland kept on searching for an exit. Meanwhile, Amir regained consciousness and found himself in a red room. He found that Louis was still alive, held by the creature who was sitting on his throne, showing Amir how he pulled Louis's head off his body. The creature went to wrap Amir in his arms, ready to break every bone in his body, but Amir stabbed the creature when at least expected him to before running away. Amir continued running aimlessly until he stumbled upon a pile of bones belonging to all the victims who had been killed by the creatures. He walked on the bones, ignoring the crunching sounds they were making, and heard Roland calling for him. The two of them climbed up, followed by the creature, and when Amir saw an explosive that could potentially put an end to the ancient monster lurking in the cave, he decided to climb down. Roland saw what he was trying to do and climbed down to help. The two of them knew that detonating the charges with them right there would kill not only the creature but also them. But they were ready to sacrifice themselves and together they detonated the explosives.